Hello and welcome to another episode of The Medicine Show. It is the last weekend in April, so I'm going to take you out to the woods and see some of the stuff that is blooming and growing right now. Some of the plants will be ones that we've seen in previous episodes and some will be all new. And hope you enjoy. Burdock has large, bristly, deeply veined leaves and can usually be found growing along fences and the edges of woods. The root of burdock can be cooked and eaten, or it can be used raw and made into remedies such as tea or tincture for the liver. It's a very gentle supporting herb for the liver. Cleavers are a very common weed of disturbed grounds and edges of fields and forests. They are bristly and will cling to hair and clothing. An infusion or tincture of cleavers is stimulating to the kidneys. It's a mild diuretic and a very useful herb to have for that purpose because it is extremely well tolerated. This plant is called Sweet Sicily and uh, smell this. It has a scent of licorice or anise to it, which is one of the easiest ways to recognize it. It's also got a dark colored stem. Uh, it's important with plants in this family, the umbiliferae, to make sure you know exactly what you're getting because some of them are delicious and some of them are poisonous. This is poison ivy. If you're going into the woods in this part of the world and you're only going to be able to recognize one plant, this is the one you need to know because it's very common and it's very irritating. The leaves have three leaflets. It grows on a vine, although sometimes sometimes it's when it's smaller, it's just freestanding like a tiny tree. Leaves tend to be shiny and uh, that's about what you need to know about it. And uh, try really hard not to touch it. And if you do touch it, try to wash it off immediately. This plant is called jewelweed and it looks kind of nondescript, but it gets easy to recognize once you know it. This is it in its very early stages. Jewelweed tends to grow in the same woods as poison ivy, um, but it, you'll find it more often alongside creeks. And uh, if you put a drop of water on it, it beads up like this. And uh, jewelweed, when it's crushed up, can be used as a uh, post-exposure treatment for poison ivy. It contains some antihistamines. It also contains some soothing emollient substances. And so if you put it on the rash, it will take some of the itchiness out of it. If you put it on the skin where the poison ivy has touched you after you've washed yourself off and before you've broken out in a rash, it will usually prevent the rash from coming on at all. These white wood violets have anti-inflammatory properties similar to those of other violets. This one is Glaucoma heteracea, known as ground ivy, although it's actually a member of the mint family, as you can see from its square stem and the shape of its flowers. This is a very common weed, and it is good for all sorts of respiratory conditions, coughs, phlegm, things like that. Most of the red trilliums are past their bloom in my part of the world, but in the darker areas of the woods there are still some. This is Jack in the Pulpit. It is our most common member of the Arum family, and uh, its leaves consist of three leaflets on a stalk, and its flowering body is encircled by a specialized structure called a spadix. And here I've lifted the top of the spadix to reveal a bright green shield bug and a dark red oblong structure, which is the actual flowering head and which will develop into the berries later on. The starchy underground part of this plant has special edible and medicinal properties, but it must be prepared in just the right way or else it is toxic and in fact, literally painful to consume. 
and there's generally not enough of it to bother with that, but I think it's a very lovely plant and something that everyone should appreciate the beauty of. We met garlic mustard in a previous episode of The Medicine Show. Now it is all grown up with a little white flower on the top and some seed pods uh, growing from the stem underneath that and then leaves down at the bottom. All parts of the plant are edible. Uh, please eat as much of it as you possibly can because it is an invasive weed in the woods and doesn't really belong there, but it is quite nutritious and has some uh, good medicinal properties as far as breaking up phlegm and being a decongestant and increasing circulation. This is Amber Honeysuckle. It is a non-native bush honeysuckle that can be really invasive in some places, especially along the edges of places that are or used to be fields. And uh, the flowers have antiviral properties. This plant is a common weed that you probably have in your garden if you live in this part of the country. This is poke, Phytolacca americana, and it is poisonous, but it is also a traditional wild edible in this part of the country. The smaller leaves are harvested and boiled, and then the water's changed and boiled again. And you want to do that at least twice. Some people do it more, and then it can be eaten, and it's got a lot of plant protein in it. These are the leaves of bloodroot. It's gotten a lot bigger since we saw it on the previous medicine show video, but it's still not time to harvest it yet. This is May apple, sometimes also called American mandrake, although it is no relation to the actual mandrake. And it will have two big leaves like this, which grow from a fork where there is, at this time of year, a really pretty flower. Later on, that turns into a fruit that gets ripe in a few months. The fruit is edible. The rest of the plant is poisonous. Uh, the resin from the roots can be used to destroy warts. And uh, you will often see it growing in colonies like this. And probably all of these plants are connected underground. The root is actually a uh, running underground rhizome that uh, goes from place to place and puts up different plants at different spots. So all of these are probably one organism that is connected underground. Here's a stand of pawpaw trees. They're blooming right now. And I'm gonna bring one of the flowers down so you can see it. This is a pawpaw flower. It is pollinated by flies. And uh, so they grow usually in small stands like this. And then in the fall, they produce a very large fruit that tastes sort of like uh, an overripe banana. And it is something that you can gather pounds and pounds of at a time if you are in the woods at the right time. So that's all for this time. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Uh, feel free to give me a comment and let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed it, uh, follow and subscribe and tell your friends. Thanks a lot. Bye.